In this diagram, you also have linear pair. And in this example, you have four linear pair. You got angle one and angle two, angle two and angle three, angle three and angle four, angle four and angle one. So in this diagram, you got a lot going on. Um, so linear pair, you know, those are two adjacent um, supplementary angles. Um, so the fact that the linear pair are always supplementary, you know that their measures add up to be 180 degrees. So you need to take that knowledge and apply it to these problems. So I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> um, talk about number 18 with you. There's a lot of equations that we could set up. We know that this angle here that's being represented by 5 times y, and then this angle that it's opposite with, the angle that's being represented as 12x minus 41, we could set up that equation. We could say, well, since those two are vertical angles, the angle that's being represented as 5y, and the other angle that's 12x minus 41, well, if they're vertical angles, then they're congruent. And if they're congruent, their measures are equal. So I can set those equal to each other. The issue is, is that this is one equation with two unknowns, and, and we can't solve that. Um, we need one equation with one unknown. So this isn't helpful right off the bat. We could also say that, well, these two guys are a linear pair. The angle that's being represented as 5x and the angle that's being represented as 5y. So if they're a, a linear pair, then their measures should sum up to equal 180 degrees. But again, you have an equation with two variables, two unknowns, um, and so that's not going to help us either. So then the last relationship that we can look at that involves these measurements is 5x, the angle that's being represented as 5x, and the angle that's being represented as 12x minus 41. Well, those two angles are a linear pair, and when you sum up their measures, they will equal to 180 degrees. So this is the equation you want to start off with. <clears throat> you want to start off with two angles um, that their measurements have to deal with the same variable. So this one has x, and that one has x. So ask yourself, what is the relationship between these two? Well, they're a linear pair, therefore they're supplementary. Therefore, when I sum them up, it's going to equal 180. So you're going to solve this equation. Uh, and you're going to get x is equal to something. You're, you're going to solve it, and you're going to get what the value of x is. And then you're going to take that value um, and then plug it into one of these. And then you can solve it. It doesn't matter which one you plug it into. It'll be, you'll get the same value. So when you're approaching one of these problems, let's say I assigned you 17, the way that you would approach it is you would say, okay, I've got three angle uh, measurements here. You need to identify two angles that involve the same variable. And then ask yourself, what do I know to be true about those two angles? So this angle measurement, 6x, the variable is x, so find another one <clears throat> with x in it. And this one, this guy right here, 15x plus 75. So since these two expressions involve the same variable, find a relationship between those two angle measurements. Well, these angles, they are a linear pair, therefore their measures sum up to be 180 degrees. So you would write an equation that's 6x plus 15x plus 75. When I add those two angles together, they're a linear pair, therefore they're supplementary, therefore the measures equal or sum up to be 180 degrees. So that's how you approach these problems. <clears throat> um, down here for 25 through 28, they tell you that angle B and angle A are, I'm sorry, yeah, angle A and angle B are complementary angles. Well, if they're complementary, you should be able to take that and interpret it and say, well, if that's the case, if they are complementary, then their measures should sum up to be 90 degrees. So what you're going to do is take these values, plug it in there, and solve for x. And once you get the value of x, so you have x is equal to something, 
Well, that's not what they ask for. They don't ask for the value of x. They ask for the measurement of angle A and the measurement of angle B. So whenever you find out what x is after solving that um, equation, you then need to plug it back in to x in each expression and figure out what the measurement truly is. <clears throat> Problems 29 through 32, you were assigned 30 and 32. Um, these are very similar, but rather than being complementary, they are supplementary. So if two angles are supplementary, then you know that their measures need to add up to equal 180 degrees. So very similarly, you will take the measurement of angle A, plug it in there, take the measurement of angle B, plug it in there, um, and solve that equation. You're going to get some value for x, and then you'll take whatever x is and plug it into each expression. <clears throat> Questions 33 through 37 deal with this diagram. There's a lot going on in this diagram, and it's so many angles. Um, let's read what it, what it has to say. Roof trusses can have several different layouts. The diagram below shows one type of roof truss made out of beams of wood. Use the um, diagram to identify two different examples of the indicated type of angle pair. So at once, two different examples of the angle pairs. So each pair is going to have two and they want two of those. So you're going to be writing four total angles for each question. <clears throat> uh, it says in the diagram angle HBC and angle BCE are right angles. So we can indicate those. You can't assume anything uh, in diagrams. Um, so just because it looks like it doesn't mean it truly is. But they told us straight up, hey, those are right angles. Um, just to clarify, a roof truss, um, that's kind of like the, the, the framework of, of, of your roof. So if you've ever been in your attic or in someone else's attic, all those beams that are going across, um, just pretty much up, like holding up your roof, um, that, that's what it is. <clears throat> it's kind of like the skeleton of your of your um, roof and, and of your attic. Um, so, I mean, there are so many examples of supplementary angles in this diagram. I and mean, they're all over the place. Um, you could use, I mean, you could be really basic about it and just say the two right angles, so angle HBC and angle BCE, those two add up to be 180 degrees, therefore they're supplementary. Um, other than that, you're just going to have to find a linear pair. And there are so many linear pair in this diagram. I mean, I'm not even going to attempt to count them all. Uh, but there are a lot of linear pair. And linear pair are always supplementary. So one example would be um, this angle here with the star and then that angle there with the smiley face. So you would say angle A, H, B, and then B, H, G. Um, those two are supplementary. Um, another example of a linear pair, if you want to kind of turn your paper this way, you have angle C, K, D, and D, K, E. Those two, those two angles are a linear pair, so on and so forth. So pick two pair and write those down. Um, complementary angles, those are angles that add up to be 90 degrees. Um, well, since you know that these are right angles, those that means they're 90 degrees. So this guy here and that guy there... That's a pair of angles that are complementary, which means they add up to be 90 degrees. Um, vertical angles, you've got so many intersections. So you've got an intersection here and you've got an intersection there. So vertical angles are those um, that are opposite of each other in these intersections. Linear pair, just got done talking about those. And then adjacent angles, you should be able to identify um, adjacent angles. Don't be upset or, or scared that... <clears throat> When I post, when you look at the answers online, um, that I didn't write your pair here for supplementary angles or linear pair. Like I said, there are so many. I'm just going to write down a couple that you could have written down. Um, the next page, these are just patterns. Um, so you, you may have to draw a pattern um, or you know draw the next figure that's going to be on the test. Um, for this, for, for 5 through 12, you were assigned 5, 7, 9, and 11. Um, it says describe the pattern in words. 
It's so important to tell me what number the pattern starts on. Tell me where it starts. So you would say, start with 113. Then, um, this pattern, you're adding 101, t sorry, 111, 111 um, to previous term to get the next. So please tell me where you start and then tell me how you get to the next one. Uh, that's an appropriate description. Then it says write the next number in the pattern. So they're only asking for one more, um, but just like on your quiz, um, I'm gonna do the same thing on my test. I asked you for the next two. Um, <clears throat> here are some more drawings or more, you know figures that you have to draw the next. Um, in this one, it says how many squares are in the next object. They're talking about the shaded squares. So you're not going to count this 3 by 3 square. You're not going to count this 4 by 4 square. You're not going to count this um, square here that's 2 by 2. It's only, you're only counting the shaded um, squares. These are just finding an appropriate counterexample. You should be masters at that by this point. On page 25, we've got um, taking a conditional statement that is not in the if-then form and transforming that. Um, you should be able to uh, take any um, conditional statement and put it in the if-then form. Five and six just gives you um, some practice on converse inverse contrapositive. Um, it's, it would be a good thing for you to think about um, what is the truth value of all those and then um, which ones are logically equivalent. Also, could I write a biconditional statement? Those are all wonderful things to think about. Um, here it says uh, decide whether the statement is true or false. If false, provide a counterexample. So this is just getting you uh, a lot of practice with those conditionals. And then the last page um, is talking about the biconditional statements. So you first off need to figure out, can I even write a biconditional statement? So is the original conditional statement and its converse, um, are those both true? And if, if they are, then you can write a biconditional. Remember, a biconditional statement is you start, you state the hypothesis, whatever that may be, you state the hypothesis, you stick in if and only if, and then you end off with your conclusion. That is a biconditional. So you need to be able to identify what is my hypothesis, what is my conclusion in all of these, and make an appropriate biconditional statement. Uh, and then you need to uh, know how to take a biconditional statement and then turn it back into just a, an original conditional statement in the if-then form and its converse. Um, and then this is testing the validity of, def of these definitions. Just kind of, um, <clears throat> is it true or is it false? And if it's false, you can find a counterexample. And the last page you guys should be um, pretty comfortable with um, writing algebraic proofs, so you need to know all those properties. Um, so it, it may be a fill in the blank kind of thing, or it may be I'll just give it to you and you can, and you're just going to go. Um, you need to be ready to do both things, fill in the blank and or just finish and, sorry, start and finish your own. So um, study well, my friends, study well, and I will see you in class.